My name's Ed Morris and I'm Technical Manager for Altechnic. I'm here today to talk to you about expansion vessels. Um, first of all, one of the big questions that we always get is what is the difference between a potable and a heating vessel? Well, in construction, they're both slightly different. So this here is a heating vessel. I've got a cutaway version here. So as we can see, we have what's called in here, we have a diaphragm. Um, so the precharge of air sits in the top of the diaphragm itself. Any expansion from the system comes into the bottom um, of, the, of the vessel itself. And obviously as, as that, uh, that pressure releases, the, the air pushes that back out. But one of the main things you'll see here is that the water sits against the metal shell. Now, when a heating system has got inhibitor in there, we dust that aside because there's no oxygen in there. So the water can sit against the, the metal itself. Now in a potable vessel, which you have here, the water actually sits within what we call a bladder. Now we can't see inside this one, but we've got a cutaway here. So inside the vessel itself we have here is a, is a rubber membrane or a rubber diaphragm. Now the reason for that is potable water by its very nature contains oxygen. We get that from the water supply. Now if the oxygenated water was went into a heating vessel, we can start to create corrosion because we've got oxidized water sitting against the metal and starts to cause pinholes and start to corrode. So to combat that in a, in a potable vessel, we put this within a rubber bladder. So there's no actual water in touch with any, any kind of metals. So we protect ourselves there from any form of corrosion itself. One important thing to remember, you cannot put a heating vessel onto a potable system, but you can put a potable vessel onto a heating system if you wish, but we cannot have the oxidized water um, going within uh, uh, the heating vessel. So obviously when they top the system, we have to make sure that we still get the right inhibitor in there itself. Um, so as well, one of the things that we do within our range is that we pre-charge our vessels with nitrogen. Now the reason for that is nitrogen is a lot denser than air. Um, air within uh, the rubber can start to permeate. So as the rubber degrades over time, it starts to become thinner and the air can start to work its way through the, the rub, whether it be for the diaphragm, whether it be for a bladder, and we start to lose precharge. Now, because nitrogen is, is a heavier or, or, or a thicker gas, we don't get as much permeation. That's why a lot of the, the sort of engineering teams in Formula One start to fill their tires now with nitrogen because they, they, they lose less pressure over time. So that's a big benefit in putting nitrogen in there over air. That's why we can give it a five-year warranty as well. So the reflex vessels have got a five-year warranty because we've got obviously faith in, in the fact that we do pre-charge them with nitrogen over air, it gives it a longer life cycle and we've got, uh, we've got some good faith in that. So that's really the big difference, you know, you can't put a, a, a heating vessel onto a potable system because of where the water sits in the vessel itself. You can put a, a potable vessel onto a heating system. Um, they sit within the, the, the metal on that one because it's, uh, it's water with inhibitor. Raw water can only sit within the rubber itself. So those are the main differences. So that's all we've got on vessels today. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you soon.